everyone, I'm going to be doing a book review and the book is Fading by E.K. Blair. So let's get into it. I just have to say a few disclaimers before I start this review that um, if you're under age, I really just want to watch this review because it does have very adult content um, included in it. So let's get on to the book. I finished this book at a quarter to three o'clock in the morning last night and it was been sitting on my Kindle for about, I would say, five months and I just decided the other day to read it and it is such a good book. So let's get into Fading by E.K. Blair. So the book starts off with our main character, Candace, and the book takes place in Seattle, which was, which is a really big relief to me to not have it in a place that you normally wouldn't have it. The last time I read a book that took place in Seattle was Fifty Shades of Grey. So, yes. And she is a ballerina major going to a university that's in Seattle. And something very bad happens to her that I'm going to get into in a little bit. There are a few characters in this book. There's Candace, the main character. There's Kimber, which is her best friend and her roommate. There's Jace, which is like her rock, the person that really if there's ever a problem she can go to. And then there's Mark, which is Jace's boyfriend and best friend, because Jace is gay. And Ryan is, her, I would say, the second biggest person in this whole book. The book goes along with her going to the country club with her mother, and she has a very hostile, um, a very bad relationship with her parents. See, they don't get along. Every time she has to go and talk to them, or go and be near them, it's always hostile and she doesn't look forward to it. Her mom introduces her to a man named Jack and Candace is like, I don't want to have to go out with him, I don't want anything to do with him, I want to focus on my school, on my studies. Now her mom and her parents don't really approve of her going to school and becoming um, a dance major. They don't think it's a respectable career that she should be able, she should do something else and to get married. So her parents are not really happy with her career and her school choices and her being single. Um, Jack picks her up from a party that she's going to and she gives him the wrong impression. She comes on to him really strong. She starts kissing and that's where the book really goes downhill. I'm gonna say that the next part was one of the hardest scenes in a book I've ever had to read in my life. Um, she runs away, she's at the party, it's at um, Jack's fraternity house, and she's trying to get away from him and he catches up to her and basically he rapes her. Um, in the back of the blur, which is a nightclub, right next, he rapes her right next to a dumpster. Now this just catches her off guard. She is emotionally and physically damaged from this event, from Jack raping her. She goes um, to the hospital. A good Samaritan calls the police and she's rushed to the hospital and Jace comes and scoops her up and just says everything's going to be okay. He's the only one that knows um, of the rape once you get more in the middle of the book. She doesn't want to talk to anybody about it. She doesn't want to talk to the detective, Kimber. And she stays with Jace for a little while, a while, a few weeks at his apartment. And her relationship with Kimber, her best friend and roommate, becomes hostile and they don't talk for a while. And she meets this guy named Ryan Campbell. Now she is just getting, having severe PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder because of the rape and she doesn't want to get involved with another guy. That's the last thing she's thinking about, but Jace and Mark are saying, come on, you need to talk to him, you need to get out of this terror that you are living in and spend some time with Ryan. So she does, she starts to like him, and uh, I'm just gonna say, this is gonna have spoilers, so if you don't want me to spoil this video, I would not continue further. Um, Ryan is the guy that was a good Samaritan to find her in the back of his bar because he owns Blur. He owns the bar where Candace was raped by Jack. And he is the one that calls the police and they come pick her up and go to the hospital. Now Candace doesn't know this and she's very scared. She's terrorized going to work. She works at a coffee grinder with her good friend and boss Roxy. She's terrorized that 
Jack is going to come walking through the door and she's going to be reminded of the rape. Now, her relationship with her parents go out the window, basically. She tells them off, she goes to their house during Christmas and Ryan's there with her and says, you know what, we're leaving, you don't need this negativity in your life right now, you need to forget your parents and we need to leave. That was the one um, scene in the book where she realizes that Ryan really cares about me. She's not just going to use me for sex and he's not another Jack. And she goes towards the ending of the book. Her relationship with Kimber, her best friend and roommate, are, is fixed. And she's nearing the end of her school career, her university career. She has this big dance competition happening at the end of the school year where she needs to perfect this dance because she is a battle I said a ballerina and she's really nervous about that she doesn't want to break any limbs and Ryan makes her do all these crazy things like go extreme hiking and surfing and there's one other character in this book that I loved I loved Ryan mom Ryan's mom Donna oh my god that woman was so sweet and she's never had that love and that affection from her parents from her mother so she really finds it with Donna and it just so it's such an emotional book and it's so gripping and the turmoil and the pain that Candace is going through throughout after this traumatic experience, the traumatic rape that she had to endure is so vividly described. E.K. Blair did an amazing job describing um, the PTSD and what you go through and oh my god, I'm going to say something a little TMI in this video. I can relate to Candace, what she went through. I went through so that's why this book at least for me was really hard to read and I would not pick it up if you're looking for a good romance even though there is a romance between Candace and Ryan that blooms and she finds out that Ryan is the guy that called the police and found her on the ground when she was unconscious after Jack raped her and they split up now this part I would have to say throughout this whole book that I pinpointed it first of all I knew it was Ryan from the very first chapter even after reading the epilogue where the rape happens I knew it was him and something happens to Jack um, at the end of the book Jack died in a drunk driving accident now in the first I thought it was Ryan that mysteriously ran him off the road and killed him I could pinpoint that so that's the only part in the series this book that I didn't like I could pinpoint all the big spoilers that were happening but it's such a good book. I don't I know it's a horrible synopsis, but there's so much that happens in this book. She um, goes to Ryan, makes sure her overcome all her fears. They sleep together, which was a big no no that she didn't want to do. Um, she goes to Blur as long as she doesn't go in the back of the club where the dumpsters where the um, traumatic experience happened. And he makes her overcome all these fears. They fall in love. And she gets a scholarship in New York City for um, work going to the American Ballet Association, I think it is, and she can't go. She ends up leaving the airport, not getting on the plane, and going straight to Ryan's house and confessing her love for him. And it's, uh, it is a good romance book, which I didn't expect. Um, she does have really, really vivid night terrors and dreams. She um, dreams that uh, Ryan is making love to her, having sex, and she can, she thinks that it's Jack basically raping her all over again, and it's such, like, I was literally shaking and crying, and I could picture myself in the book instead of Candace, so E.K. Blair does a really good job of that. That's why I say it's not a book that you really want to get into if you're looking for a nice, happy summer read, because that's not it. It's a really dark, it's a really vivid book about um, an emotional and horrible event that happens to a woman. And if, you're look, if you don't want to read about rape, don't read this book. But if you want a good, gripping book, read it. Um, the ending is gorgeous. They fall back in love. They go back together. Jack's dead. Kimber and Candace's relationship is fixed. And it's so good. You need to pick it up. Um, there are two other books in the second one. There's three books. The first one is Fading. And the other one is... Sorry. <laughs> is freeing which is told by jace's point of view her her gay best friend and there's a third one called yeah come here falling which is told by ryan's point of view 
So you can read Fading um, as as a standalone book. It's fine. But I love the series so much, and I love Jace and Ryan's um, characters so much, and I'm gonna read all three. So as I said, be prepared to read this book. Um, tissues and a large amount of alcohol will help. I had three glasses last night. <laughs> Um, just because the scenes, as I said, are so vividly described in this book, and it's so good. Um, I would actually read this in the fall because it's not a happy-go-lucky summer read. So, yeah, that's my very, very opinionated book review of Fading by E.K. Blair. And there's another book that she wrote called Bang, and I cannot wait to read those. So I'll see you later.